G'day guys and girls, welcome back to another episode. And on this adventure, we've left Esperance. And where did we left, leave Esperance going to? Nowhere. <laughs> Literally. Um, so if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell for all the notification. We've landed at this little gem of a spot. I'm gonna swing the camera around a moment and show you. The weather isn't the greatest this week. It is getting better towards the tail end and the weekend. We've got Demi's birthday this weekend, Sunday. We've got Mother's Day as well. But this week, we're gonna share with you guys and girls as a family adventuring with no daily destination. Mm. We have no end destination. Mm. We're making our way around that southwestern pocket, somewhere towards, I think, Bremer Bayway eventually. But in between Esperance and there, we've got no spots that we've no. actually allocated to stay at. So this week is a free spirited week mm -hmm. as travelers with no destination in mind. And we're gonna show you how easy it is as a family um, of three humans, two dogs, that if you just use wiki camps, like, mm. you know, that's what we're looking at, weren't we? Mm. And there's all these cool little spots along here. Um, this uh, place we're at is called? Munglinup. No, Starvation Bay. Starvation Bay, but it's in the Munglinup area. Round that way. Yep. Anyway, we're at Starvation Bay. So without further ado, let's walk down. I'm gonna show you the campsite in a moment. We're just gonna be doing little one-nighter hops here and there between campsites. We're sort of gonna be traveling, what? two, two and a half hours at most per day um, over the next few days until we get somewhere for the weekend and set up for Demi's birthday to make it very special and obviously Mother's Day as well. But have a look at this. This is the walk from our camp here at Starvation Bay. 15 bucks a night, love? Yeah. 15 bucks a night. You pay as you arrive in. Dogs are allowed. There's a little bit of reception, but have a look at this. Excuse the wind, as I said. The weather's not the best. But what a cool little spot. I could just picture this if it was calm, very little wind, how cool it would be. There's a guy fishing over there on the rocks as well. I'll have a look, see what it's like in the morning. Maybe we can get a line in for an hour or so in the morning, depending on wind, obviously. you to be pretty keen to be fishing this, but what a cracking spot, Starvation Bay. Let's jump up to the campsite. We're gonna show you the campsite itself. So this is how quick the walk is from the campsite to the beach. You're running. <laughs> the old dad bod, working it. <laughs> Don't forget your shoes, love. How cool is this though? Like you walk through these trees to your own, almost your own very private beach, just about it feels like. There's our site for the night. We've got a couple of people here. There are some toilets, no showers obviously. You've got to be self-sufficient, no power. You need to bring in your own water. But we've got our own fire pit. So tonight, we are gonna have a bush beach campfire. Here we go. Let's get underway for this week's episode. You live free. We got fire. All prepped and prepared by the wifey too. She knows how to cook. She knows how to be a great wife and she can start a fire, that's for sure. Yew! Oh. Not letting go. Woohoohoo! Alright, love, do you want to show us your vegetable curry that you got cooking here? Yeah. Oh, if there was smell o vision, it smells amazing. Tell us a little bit about this pot, you said. So, this pot was given to me by Chris's mother, Liz. Hello, Liz. How you Hello, going? Hello, Bob Sheep. I hope you're good. So she gave this to me mm. and we're cooking a vegetable curry. And I'm gonna add some prawns in there for the husband. Yew. So a little bit of protein goes a long way with the man. Oh yeah. He doesn't just like to eat vegetable meals. So nah, I thought need the protein. Some, um, prawns. Happy days. Anyway, that's us for tonight. We're gonna chill out, relax. Got the fire going. We're gonna have a feed. Probably an early night, I imagine. Yeah. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the morning. Morning, legends. I'm bolting down. Oh, I've just dropped the phone. Come on, here. I wanted to show you this. Check it out. Wait for it. Wait for it. You. Oh, 
Have a look at the sunrise. Have a look at that. Oh, how magical. Just around the corner here, there's this full protected enclosed rock pool area. You can see it's all sand in here and you've got that rock break at the back there to stop any waves coming in here. And it's just deep enough. It's probably like knee height. And look how clear that water is. This is a great spot to have a little swim just here. Nicely protected, nice and sheltered. And have a look, there you go. <laughs> Charlie girl. In you go. Go on. Oh, water babies these too. They absolutely love water. Oh, she sees the seagull over there. So check it out behind me, Starvation Bay even has its own little boat ramp. Um, so you can get down here. It's not the easiest of boat ramps and it's not the deepest of boat ramps. But if you've got a little tinny like I do, 3.75 meter, you'd get down there okay. You'd get in that water okay. Um, if you've got a big half cab, 15, 16, 17 feet, it's a bit of a drop down there off of that uh, boat ramp there. But anyway, there's a provision here to, uh, to launch smaller boats or even kayaks even. If you've got kayaks, it'd be a great spot to kayak all around here. So we've just dropped into Ravensthorpe um, just to grab some fuel and some supplies from the hardware store. And we caught this lollipop and we thought we'd give it a bit of an explore. So we're going to have a look and um, tell you what we think. Check it out legends, the Bremer Bay Inlet or Outlet, however way you want to look at it, out to the ocean. And uh, we're going to get a rod in tomorrow, but uh, I've heard there's a fair few brim on offer in here at the moment, so I've got a few little 35 to 45 grammer body uh, lures that we're going to go. We'll try a bit of bait as well, but yeah, how cool is this inlet outlet? The water's flowing at the moment. But the water, absolutely pristine clear. Just have a look at it. The tide's pushing in at the moment, as you can see. What a cracking spot. Woohoo! Yeah. Look at that. I just wanted to come down here and show you guys how crystal clear this water is. From where I was before, you couldn't really make out how clear it is, but that bit of weed there is actually submerged below the water. I mean, have a look at my feet. That's how, how clear this water is. Great little swimming hole, this. It's gonna be warmer on the weekend, gonna have a dip. There's kind of like three, couple of little ledges. You got the shallow bit here, then it drops down maybe to about knee height, maybe above knee height, and then it drops down there to a little hole. That's uh, probably, shoulder height maybe head height and i'm going to be jumping in there later this weekend when the weather warms up incoming current but uh it's only going to push you up onto the shore here and uh there's a real shallow bar across here so it's pretty safe in here i'd imagine it's probably too shallow for any chompy chompy body body things to come in here um, but there's these cool sand flats all along here and up there as well don't know if you can make it out with the sun there but We'll have a flick for um, some brim and some flatties anyway. <laughs> what a little mint slice of paradise this is here at Bremer Bay. Let me tell you folks, we uh, just fell upon this spot by adventuring, wiki camping it and uh, so far it's got the goods. Well, so much to the point that we're here for two nights, we've extended, we're staying here for four nights. Anyway, th that's Bremer Beach way. Onwards to the next beach. G'day legends, well, we are tight lines and hopefully bent rods. We're just gonna work this little body of water in through here. Um, walking distance from the Brimmer Caravan Park, look how clear the water is. We've got a little bib diver hard body, 45, 45er, and uh, we're gonna try and chase some brim, maybe some flathead along these sand flats along here, but have a look at that for a backdrop, eh? How good does that look? Anyway, tight lines, bent rods. We're just going to walk up and down this bank and uh, 
just sort of target these pockets of water in here and some of the sand flats along there as well and see if we can maybe jag ourselves a nice floody and uh, talk of the town is is that there's good size brim in here around 30 centimeters 32 centimeters at the moment so uh, let's get among it the real advantage with this little bib diver is you can cast it to where you want so I can see I don't know if you can make out there's a bit of a bar there and then it drops off over the top of that over that ledge there so what I'm doing is I'm casting the bib diver stays on top of the surface until you start retrieving it back in but it sort of floats with the current and then you can choose where you want it to start diving down so I'm just casting a bit left of that branch then I'm allowing the tide to sort of pull it to the left and then when it gets into that body there that's where I'm retrieving and with the action makes a bib diver go down in that little pocket or that hole that I want so you can actually use the current to your advantage here so there it is it's drifting now with the current and it's just about coming over the top of that pocket now and I want to dive down and now I retrieve and it dives down into that little ledge there so one of the real advantages of using these cool little bib divers hard body bib divers is you can use the conditions to your advantage whether it's the current or the wind or both but yeah that's it there little Halco 45 a laser pro cracking little bib diver and those colors doesn't matter where I'm fishing that red and white always seems to do me well there's a nice body of water all through here nice big drop off you can see the water's flowing in through here at the moment tides coming in get this bib diver down in that body of water ah the old weed fish eh I'll tell you what Fishing places like this, while it's traveling Australia, all to yourself, it doesn't really get much better. It's priceless moments. And uh, you could not catch a fit. Oh, yeah, we're on. <laughs> oh, there's a whole school of them in there. Look at it. Yeah. Little salmon. <laughs> Good fun. All right, just mixing it up a bit now. Just flicked over to the soft plastic. Um, just because there's a fair bit of water moving in through here. So that Halco was popping the surface, surface a fair bit. So um, we've gone a quarter ounce jig head on this one. This one's a space guppy. So uh, we'll try that. See how we go. Just trying to get it down to the bottom a bit more too. Ideally for a floody to take it. All right, just moved spots. And uh, I was getting hit straight away there. So let's get this one back out there. Feel like salmon again, but. Oh, this water's just divine. So beautiful. Oh, yep, oh, yep. <laughs> little salmon, little salmon there. Probably hooks a little bit too big, I think, for these size fish. I might have to drop to a smaller jig head. We'll give it one more go. Yep. There they are. Look at them. There's a whole school of them there. Yep, we're on. <laughs> oh, man. Light gear. Look at it just swimming in the current there beautifully. Oh, 
Wow. Check it out. Yeah. There you go, guys. That's good Mulloway bait for me. Or, as you guys call it here in WA, Jewies. So check this out. Um, there's all these cool little tracks just running alongside the water, water's edge here that you can sort of cut through and uh, get to the water's edge. So I'm walking pretty much along the water line, but in some places it gets a little bit too deep. So I'm just cutting back onto the road and then back through tracks like this, but have a look at that. What's going on legends? Today is Sunday, family day, and today is extra special for a couple of reasons. Why? My birthday! Ew! Demi Titans. 12. 12 years of age today, and it's on another special day because it's Mother's, Mother's day. day! So to all you mums out there, wishing you an incredible Mother's Day, especially to my mother and uh, Auntie your, Sharon. Auntie Mama Sharon. Shaz. Auntie Shazza. And uh, mummy as well. Me, yeah. <laughs> How cool are mums? They're the best. They rock. <laughs> um, so today we're just going to show you guys and girls around Bremer Bay. And it's a little bit hazy because there's a little bit of backburning going on at the moment. But I'll tell you what, this place has absolutely captivated us, hasn't it? It's going to be so hard to leave, honestly. Yeah. It's, um, so it's like an Esperance, but on a smaller scale. Like I think the population's here about 350 people. So there's real cool community feel, like everyone is so friendly. so friendly. He says, g'day to you, how's your fishing going? And the beaches, as you can tell behind us, even though it's a bit smoky, you've got crystal clear blue waters, like 100% clarity, um, magical white sand, again, with no shells in it. So anyway, we're going to show you around um, Blossom Beach a little bit around there um, and then we're going to head into Bremer Beach for a little bit of a dip on a ledge that we, we found before. Um, just a cool little spot, we'll pull up for some lunch. So anyway, kick back, relax. We're going to show you around Bremer Day. You! Bremer, Bremer Day? Bremer, Bremer Bay. Bay. I'll get it right. I'm, I'm too excited. Let's do this. So we've just pulled into this cool little bay that we found. I was fishing here yesterday and thought, great spot to come for a swim. Excuse the smoke, there's some back burning going on at the moment, the haze, but the water in here is absolutely crystal clear. We've just reversed the 200 up in here as well. We're gonna have a cook off, um, but what a great little spot. All right, time to get wet and get in the water for a dunk. Okay. Nice. Is it cold when you get in? It's magical. Jump. Okay. Come on. Woo! <laughs> Goes up a little. <laughs> <laughs> Two, one. Yeah, 
come here. Go, swim against it. Swim. I can Sorry, oi. The devices are working very fine. <laughs> the booty. Work. The booty. Mm. Bye. I'm just going to float away. <laughs> <laughs> you could float back to camp. Oh. <laughs> Well, you all know how much we love history, so whilst here in Bremer Bay, we're stopping off at the Wallstead Museum and Gallery. There is a cafe here, but we've had breakfast and we're having lunch on the beach again. But we'll show you around the Wallstead Museum here in Bremer Bay. Let's get in there and check it out. So have a look at these old horse stables, these beautiful stone. And this is the tool shed back in the day, wow. So cool. See, they used to even make shoes. Yeah, so all these are for oh, wow. old hammers. Look, little ones. <laughs> so cute. Why do they have such skinny feet? Ooh. The lathe. Yeah. Tools continue. For days and days and days. Look at the old tools. Old drill press there. This is like from back in the 1800s, isn't it? This, isn't that what it says on time? This would be the old... Here you go, this is where they had the... Heat up the metal. Look. This is where they'd have the coal pit. Look at this. Wow. How cool is that? The old kangaroo matches. That's the toys kids used to play with. Fire brigade hat. Check these out. Unreal. They're looking good, Nick, don't they, darling? Nineteen twenty seven Chev Peacock. The old crank shift there. Ooh, get a going. Crank over the Chev. I don't know what it is, but I see these and it reminds me of like the moonshine days running the moonshine. Check it out, nineteen fifty three Thailand taxi. Tuk tuk. What a collection, hey, of cars. Nineteen twenty nine Chev National. So Max Wellstead, obviously Wellstead Museum, owns a lot of cool early 1900 cars. This is a 1925 Dodge Californian hardtop. This one's cool. I like this one. You like that one? Yeah. Just because it's red and red's my favourite colour. <laughs> it's more of a maroon, isn't it? Well, it's still red. <laughs> Check it out on the inside. Side by side bike. Wow. Great. Look. <laughs> There's. How oh, cool. 
So it's got this real like rustic feel to it, just the smell. Just takes you back to that era. Wow. Look at the lanterns up there, all the old Glenfiddich scotch bottles for the scotch lovers out there. English police pistol, Irish police pistol. Oh, look at this horse and cart up here, Demi. Look at the detail of that. Whoa. Now, how would you like that for a toy, eh? That'd be cool. That's cool. That's a good looking side. Ooh. Have a look at this old piece, the old carriage. Wow. All the old horse and carriage. Check out the old Royal Mail. Big cart, this one. The traveller, the commuter. Look at these, like leaf springs back in the day, but these are actually like leather. All the luggage at the back and on top. Licensed to carry 14 passengers. Unreal. That was the one you used to uh, commute from destination to destination over long distance, I'd imagine, and the smaller ones were just the everyday carts traveling to and from A to B. All right, now we're coming into the old tractor shed. There's a 100-year-old she shearing shed there that we'll have a look at in a moment. Have a look at these beauties. Iron Man. <laughs> it does actually look a little bit like Iron Man's mask, doesn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, there we go, the big John Deere. Oh good. Yeah. Terry Guyver. He obviously liked restoring them. It's a nice big one, that one, isn't it? Case. Petrol Kero produced in USA 1953. Horsepower 42.5. That's a big change for that one. So, for those who would have checked that episode where we were um, in Esperance, the Skylab fragments that we've seen at the Esperance Museum, or here's a little bit of it as well that you can see. Um, at the Wellstead Museum tour here. Yeah. Check it out. How cool is that? That's been into space, kiddo. No, 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 no. No! Well, there you go, folks. That's the Wellstead Museum Cafe. What do you think, kiddo? It was cool. It was cool. Um, cost it's 26 bucks for two adults, one child. And uh, you can get it done pretty much within half an hour, 45 minutes. Obviously, you want to take a little bit longer, so yeah. There's some other things up here that we can have a look at. Yeah, there's some old farming equipment, so and um, yeah, it's just about five minutes outside of Bremer Bay, so if you like your history, good value. Get around it. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> See, it's the small things that Bremer Bay has thought about it in this beautiful community. Check this out. This is a shower just out from Bremer Beach. How cool is it? Well, give us, give the viewers a show, darling. Let's have a look. No, see. no, 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 Papa, no, Papa should do it first. No, ladies Papa. first. Oh, wow. So it's a surfboard shower. Oh. 
Yeah, How cool is that? Okay, That's awesome, eh? Yes, There's We're another one over one here. These. Look at this southern right whale Muriel on the um, can be seen toilet blocks here. Our waters between July and September. That's pretty cool. That's awesome, eh? And there's another one over here. Surfboard share. Oh, oh. There's leafy sea dragons. C150 leafy sea dragons. Trail situated at Little Boat Harbor. That's pretty cool. And there's this ripper playground for the there's kids just over people. here. I'll just run over the rope. I haven't got any thongs on it. But anyway. Hey, let me know in the comments below what do you think of my new singlet I bought. One for colour obviously, but it's uh, customised artwork from all things Esperance store in Esperance. So big shout out to the lady that we met there. Um, absolutely loving this singlet. It's that nice light material as well and the colours are awesome and she actually made this piece of art. And a shout out to some of my friends that I made in the caravan park. Oh, who are they? Uh, too many to name. Oh. <laughs> most of them are Filipino and some of them are twins. There was heaps of Filipino friends that you hung out with. Thanks for spending your time with Demi and making her birthday really special. And there was Cody. Big shout out to Cody, mate. Had a good chat with him this morning. Didn't we shot, shot some basketball hoops with him and uh, literally chewed my ear off while I was cooking breakfast for him. Great little kid. And he's only nine years old, but I tell you what, can the kid hold a conversation? So Cody, if you're watching, big g'day to you. I think you're on your way over to Esperance today and then eventually over to Port Lincoln. Mum, Dad, if you're watching, make sure you stop in at Elliston and Coffin Bay, absolutely, if you're going over that way. Anyway, I'm going to flip the camera around and check out this cool playground here. All wood. Yeah! Got the tinny. Ah, oh, the captain of the sea. Look at this. It's an eagle's nest up here. Wow. How cool is this? It's just made out of these earthy wood materials. There's no... No metal, no steel. How cool is it? Oh, a little, little bit, but I like it how they've used like native products. Okay. Yeah, it's awesome. We've actually found that the place that we went to before this. Yeah. The playground was sort of similar, yep. wasn't it? Very similar theme, yeah. Where was that? Uh, that was Esperance. All right, folks, that wraps up another episode. Thanks for joining us on this Starvation Bay to Bremer Bay. We're hugging that coastline. How did you girls find it? Uh, Fun. I'm so in love. Yeah. I'm so in love with this place. I really, I was saying to Crystal, how many times have I said it to you? Yeah. I want to buy a property here. <laughs> 50,000 times. I'm like, yeah. let's buy something here. Let's buy something. But we've still got the whole of Australia to look at to see. If we fall in love with every single place, we'd want to buy property everywhere. So, which, could is, have which is not a bad thing. But. Yeah. Starvation Bay was a cool little spot stop over. Obviously, the weather wasn't as good as what we've had here. But, yeah, there's something really special about Bremer Bay. We've just enjoyed being here. You've got this gorgeous ocean out here. You've got the inlet that we um, showed you earlier where we were having a swim and a bit of a cook-up. Um, it's just a great little spot. It's epic. It's unreal. It's probably... I don't know, is it number one at this stage? It's up there. Let's just, let's just leave there's it Coffin Bay, there's there. Elliston that's, you know, close to our hearts because it's, it's home. It's SA, but in WA, this so far is the best spot we've pulled into by far. Um, so thanks for supporting us and following us on this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, smash that bell. We're going to keep hugging that southwestern coastline because we are beach babes. Yeah. And we're going to be heading to Denmark next. Um, we might stop in at Albany, can't get the Toyota in for a, a service there unfortunately. It's hoping to get in there next week but apparently Toyota Albany's been hit with COVID so they're rescheduling services so we might stop there briefly and push on to Denmark. I've had a few locals, even people that were here actually said make sure you get down to Denmark, it's just as nice and uh, good fishing of course as well which is always of helpful. Course. Anyway, until the next episode, as we always say, live, live free. free.